So I'm not a high energy guy. I'm not extroverted. Uh, I'm grumpy often. Um, but that really, really works for me because I own it and I project very, very clear intent about who I am to the girl. So if you guys don't think you have to be, you know, like Vince Kelvin, who is one of my favorite speakers and a very good friend of mine, and when we go out together and wing together, it's, it's quite hilarious because it can't get any more extreme than the levels of low and high energy. But it both works because that's who we are and we're just expressing um, the energy level that we feel comfortable with. Yeah? But at the same time, always challenge the people that you're with. Allow silence to sit because people tend to fill it and women speak more than us anyway. And at the same time, be working on your ultimate lifestyle. And don't, be, don't buy into the bullshit of working eight hours a week for the rest of your life, making yourself go grey early uh, in order to maybe one day have that car or that house or that watch or whatever that's then going to maybe mean you're going to get the girl. That's all bullshit. I've taken gorgeous girls off guys who are far richer and you know, more successful than I will ever be in those value terms because I'm trading on the currency that's most important in life, which is the human emotion. If you guys can look people in the eyes, ask them questions about who they really are and allow them to express themselves to you, they will love you. They will want to fuck you. They will want to help you. I have two rules in seduction. One of them is the right to freedom rule. Make no apology and take full responsibility. Make no apology for who you are, what you want, what you're trying to achieve in this life. But take responsibility for the fact that you have to be the one to go out there and make it happen. If you allow external circumstances, your height, your race, your age, you know, the last uh, thing that happened to you when you approached a girl or any of these things to hold you back, then you are a prisoner of external circumstances. So take responsibility for the fact that you're going to have to go out there and face this over and over again and you will get smashed sometimes. You will get uh, you know, your ego shattered, which is a great thing. I love getting my ego shattered by girls because it makes me reappraise constantly over and over again who I actually am. Because every time I think I know who I am, some girl or some circumstance comes along and smashes it and then I get to uh, recreate myself. This, uh, this journey, seduction, in my mind, is, uh, is an amazing catalyst for personal change if you choose to take it that way. It can become something that turns you in a twist, into a twisted weirdo. And I've seen many guys go down that path. Please don't let that happen to you. But if you, you do it in the right way, it allows you to grow in all directions, spiritually, financially, in your social world, sexually. Because a woman, a good woman, will act as a mirror to you. When held up, she will show you your flaws and she will show you the power in yourself that you didn't even know you had yet. If, you were, if you're actually able to be honest and authentic with her. Don't try and pre pretend to be somebody you're not, but be very, very willing to explore and expand who you thought you were. Questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciated the speech. Uh, I watched the whole thing and uh, even have to go to the bathroom very bad. But uh, I want to, like you're talking about this stuff that has to do with presence, that has to do with, uh, you know, talking to people. And I think excellent talking about the challenge and nobody talks about this and how to do it. But what I want to ask you, and I think this is really important for me to hear too, is what is your end goal of that challenge? Just like you just said seduction for you a woman will humble you a woman will a good woman will change you and actually challenge you and bring up fears what would be the end result that <clears throat> we should all be looking for if we are following this path from okay that? do you do you mean in terms of challenging within that small context or or overall uh the small context but mainly to the overall challenge okay well i love to be challenged by 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 women and people as well um i think when you, when you step out there, because inevitably when you start challenging women, they'll challenge you back. And, and women do this all the time anyway. They start poking at men to see what they're made of because they have to. They have to screen men based not necessarily on what's first given to them, but what happens when they poke at them. Which is why guys, I don't know why guys get all upset about what they call shit tests. I love them because it gives me an opportunity to demonstrate to the girl who I actually am. Um, the point, the point of challenging is that it gets to the heart of the matter. It gets to the reality of what's actually happened. I don't, the, the first answer that somebody gives you without any pressure on them 
is going to be the, the one that they got to through the path of least resistance. They're going to give you as little as they have to. T people tend to do that unless they really want to impress you for some reason. So what I want to do in that situation is I want to allow her the opportunity to show me more of who she is. And I demand it, actually. And in the same way, I want her to do the same to me. You know, I was out the other night and I was talking to a girl and she just looked me dead in the eyes and said, do you like music? Not in like that way of like, what kind of music do you like? It's like, are you serious about music? And I found myself in that moment going, I'm really passionate about music. Music's really important. And before I'd noticed it, I'd realized she challenged me in exactly the way that I would usually do it. And it had that effect where I actually gave more of myself because I felt the pressure because she was expecting more. People who expect more out of life get more. That's basically it. If you want more out of life, you've got to challenge and expect more. And there's just one more thing. What would be your end goal of this? Like, what is... Uh, in seduction? Yeah, because we talked about this last night, and I know you have, like, it's really impactive. Things yeah, yeah. Say, so. Well, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a constant evolution. <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, my personal story is pretty wacky, but I've been through a whole lot of different um, lives and experiences within seduction, from being, you know, a monogamous guy to uh, suddenly going, all right, I want to have sex with as many girls as possible, to going... All right, what I want to do is I want to experiment with some relation par relationship paradigms that are a bit out there. So I wanted to have five insanely hot, insanely challenging girlfriends all at once who all knew about each other. That, at some point, that was my thing. And I worked very hard and got to that point. I don't necessarily suggest uh, it's pretty hard to juggle that kind of thing. Um, I didn't have time for anything else. But I wanted to push it and see what the extremes were. And I learned a lot about myself and a lot about women during that, during that phase. I then reached a point where I met one fucking amazing woman who blew all the others away and challenged me on a level that I'd never experienced before. And, you know, there, there will come times in your seduction career where you'll need to make choices about, is this serving you anymore? If you've got to the point where you are getting regular sex with lots of different girls, which I don't, I'm not going to say don't go through that, it's for sure, go through it, check it all out. Um, but there will come a time where you're not learning anything more because of that. And then you need to recognize when it's time to evolve to a new or a different level. And I noticed that you know, men who get into this go through arcs of, of development, going from inactive single, which is where some of you will be and you never want to be, which is where you're celibate and you don't want to be celibate. That sucks. Uh, all the rest are legitimate. Actively single, which is where you're choosing to be single, but you get to experience sex on whatever level it is that you want. You know, having multiple relationships. Um, that are ethical, that are honest and open, which is really easy to do. Uh, a lot of guys are always like, how do you have more than one girlfriend with, you know, you have to lie, right? No, you don't. You just need to be really clear about it from the very beginning and accept that uh, some girls won't be cool with it. I would just used to say that, look, I want to tell you where I'm at. Um, I'll, I'll understand if you're, if you're not okay with it. When you put it like that, a lot of girls will be cool with it. So for me, it's, there is no end goal. Like, uh, I'm continuing to evolve in this. If, there was, if I felt there was an end goal, I would get out of this business completely. I would move on to something. I'd go back to Shaolin Temple and sit in the monastery, which I may end up doing. Maybe that's my, my whole journey. Um, seduction is a big part of the hero's journey. Feeling like you're alive, like you're a man, like you have a masculine presence, like you have a purpose in life. There's got to be a woman along, or many women along that, that path. But at the same time, don't let that for too long become your path unless you're going to end up like us, yeah, because that gets crazy. Yeah. All right, what else? Yeah. You were talking about, um, oh, never mind. You were talking about, um, you know, always asking questions, um, but something I learned on a... I didn't, I never said always oh, ask questions. Oh, oh, sorry, ask, you did say um, that we should ask questions. That's part of conversation, yeah. Yeah, yeah something I... <laughs> Uh, something I learned on a, another seminar was um, that the person who asks the questions is always in control. In control of what? The, um, uh, the situation. Okay, I don't agree with that. Okay. Okay. We'll have but I mean, well, okay. I, well, what's the what's the point you're getting at here? Like, what do you what's your question for me? I'm saying that um, you know it's about uh, leading, isn't it, and being yeah. in control of the situation. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to let a girl lead, like, and there's there's different ways to lead. Uh, okay, so like I travel a lot, right? So I, I rock up in cities where I don't know where the fuck I am, and I get lost just walking out my own door. I'm, I've got a terrible sense of direction. Um, okay, so for example, I'm going on a date tonight. 
and with, a, with what you would consider to be a very high value girl, very attractive and successful and so on. And uh, we're shooting text back and I'm like, I have no idea where to take her. I can't, I can't say, well, I think we should go to, uh, I don't know, anyway. So I'm chatting and I'm saying, all right, I think we, sh we, should, uh, we should meet at seven, but you're gonna have to take the lead on where. Yeah. So I'm actually leading her to lead me. Say if I go back to a girl's house, um, I can't lead her to the bedroom because I don't know where it is. Yeah? So I'll say, all right, give me the tour. Let's go. And I'll push her to like, take me. I'm being led. Yeah? You can, you can lead people in all sorts of ways by getting them to ask you questions or you asking them questions or whatever. It's really about how you steer the overall um, aspect of the conversation. I think it's very, very, it's way too arrogant to, to presume that. And girls see through arrogance very quickly. Or if they don't, then, then they're not that well socialized. Um, feeling like you know you always need to be in charge and you know if, if she asked you a question and she's kind of leading the, the conversation for a while that you're losing power and all that it's not true if a girl wants to like expand on something or explore ideas with me or wants to challenge me on something I'm totally cool to let her do that because I'm confident I'm not arrogant you know, I've got nothing I actually don't have anything to prove I, I'm, I'm happy with who I am and I know that I, I tend to get what I want and if for some reason she doesn't like me, well, I can live with that, yeah? So I wouldn't worry so much about that. Yes, you want to be leading the overall tone and you want to be thinking about where the interaction is headed, okay? What's the point? If you're just sitting there and like chatting randomly, floating around, nothing's happening, then yeah, you need to take leadership. Um, but if for a while she's getting all animated and she's probing into you, well, cool, let's let her do that. And that will demonstrate good things about you. It shows that you don't have anything to hide, that you're willing to let a woman you know, see what you're actually made of. And then if it starts, you know, then at some point you shift it back and go, all right, let's get the fuck out of here. Or let's do something and you start to move it around and lead it. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, one more, we're done? All right, thank you very much, gentlemen.